do, and unfortunately that puts us in a real bad place. I will tell you this, monetary policy doesn't help what's about to happen. And the, and the real problem is, when we step back and look at the, the, the evolution of tariffs with China, it started with steel and aluminum, then we moved to $250 billion worth of goods that sort of landed in the middle. It, it was intermediate goods, it wasn't the finished goods. If you look at the basket that the remaining $300 billion is, directly affects what's going right with the United States economy right now, and that's the consumer. So 80% of that basket directly hits the consumer. The consumer of that 300 billion, of that 300 billion. That will now be subject and, to tax. And they had not been hit before, and that's why you're seeing the dichotomy in the U.S. economy where the consumer has actually been relatively resilient. And it's been the enterprise, the business, the corporation that had a great deal of uncertainty been, but been hit much harder. So I think this strikes at the, the strength of the U.S. economy very hard in a, in a period of time where that's, the, that, that's where the real strength of the U.S. economy is. So I think that this is something monetary policy is not going to fix if we continue to escalate with China you know the market's going to have to go a whole lot lower it goes beyond what monetary policy can 100 percent can touch Scott Wren let's turn to you the market was up what 300 plus points earlier today in a bounce back after yesterday's uh, swoon it's now down 200 on the Dow um, is there any way to overstate how important uh, tariffs are right now well, you know, Ty, in the uh, your segment before the top of the hour, you know, Kelly said her reaction was, holy cow. And my reaction was very, very similar, uh, not exactly similar, and I can't say what it was on television, <laughs> but, I mean, um, you well, know, we may, had a may great... Both come from cows. <laughs> we, that's right. We had a great, you know, we had a great bounce-back day going. I, it made sense to me what uh, the S&P 500 was doing after yesterday and into today. But clearly, as Art said, uh, this trade situation, it is a huge deal. And, and the market is going to react very negatively to trade news. Now, do we believe that, uh, if, it's, if it's negative trade news, uh, do we believe there is going to be a trade deal? We do. Um, we don't think the market is requiring Why do you say a that? perfect Why trade deal. Why do you say deal. that well, now? I, I mean, I think everything, everything, we, everything right now uh, does not point that direction at all. Well, now, I think that, um, you know, for us, uh, basically, these two economies, we kind of need each other. Um, you, know, you know, they're big markets, the two biggest economies in the world. Um, you know, we have one controlled economy. Ours is, you know, not controlled by the government. Um, but, but this is very important for confidence, uh, for supply chains, for overall trade. You can see in the earnings that are coming through, not only here in the United States, but globally. I mean, this has been a headwind for earnings. Look at uh, companies. Companies in Taiwan and South Korea that export into China, tech companies, I mean, their earnings are down 25, 30, 40 percent in the fourth, first and second quarter here. I mean, this is a big deal yeah. with 40 percent of the revenues in the S&P 500 coming from outside the country. We need help from these other economies for our S&P 500 companies to meet these earnings expectations. This is a big deal. We don't want to have additional headwinds on trade. That said, our, the reason why, look at Walmart stock again. Right. While it's reversed lower today, again, about a pretty big two to three percentage point move, it's only down, it's barely lower right now, it's almost positive. Right. We're, you know, they've mitigated their exposure to China. It's not humongous. They're, they sell a lot of food. A 10 percent tariff on finished goods that you're talking about, are you just going to see U.S. suppliers pushing back against that and saying, we're not taking that price, or maybe we absorb half of it, we pass half of it along, and because the U.S. consumer is so strong, the impact will be largely unnoticed? Meaning, so does it continue to hurt business investment, some of those survey-based, you know, measures more so than actually have a real impact on the U.S. economy? Oh, absolutely. To the extent that you can get that accomplished and, f and either find another source uh, for that good or push back and, and, and try to split that, it's still affecting your margins. And it affects, even to a larger extent, the, the lack of confidence that businesses have right now. So they're, they're a much larger part of what's going on in the U.S.-China trade war is not the math. It's not the economics of what 25 percent is on 250 billion and now 10 percent on 300 billion. It's the confidence factor that's just not there. You stop making decisions. You put off decisions until there's an end game to this. And this feels like this just moved this out. This is a much more elongated U.S.-China trade war than we thought we were coming in today. The market was able to compartmentalize this and say, as long as we don't escalate, we can deal with what we're doing right now. Yeah. And now the market's been thrown a, a, a I, you know, there, There's lots of speculation in the market right now.